Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective perspective. <laughs> bang, bang. I don't like that. I don't like that. I like how you do I... intro. Bang, bang. Bang, bang. I say like, kind of like with a little bit of a bang, bang. oriental accent. Bang, bang. <laughs> Welcome to Chopman's Chicken, Cashew oh, Chicken. Who ever thought of putting cashews in chicken? I don't know. I don't know. Cashews are an expensive nut, let me tell you. Really? Yeah, I'm pretty sure cashews are like one of the more expensive nuts. Aren't they like genetically modified? I don't know. Are they? I believe so. I'm scared. What is it? it? Yeah, I think it is cashews. I think it's yeah. cashews are genetically modified. I think so. Maybe Did that's you? just confirmation bias in my own head. Maybe. Like, I just want to sound like a genius. You're just making it up. I threw the idea out there. Yeah. Did and then I wanted to, like, keep it going. Yeah. Well, you just want to be smart. You know, you just want to yeah. be Yeah. Anyway, did you know that pistachios used to be pink or red? Pistachios. Yep. Pistachios. Anyway, pistachios. Anyway, I read this whole thing about how they used to be produced or, like, grown somewhere somewhere across the world. I don't remember wh- where it was, but they had, like, this weird coloring. So they added this dye to it. And so they used to be pink, like, when my dad was a kid. And then we got into some kind of war with wherever they were being, uh, uh, what's it called grown mm-hmm. and then they were like well we can't get pistachios anymore so then they had to learn how to like grow it in california and then that's why our pistachios are no longer pink really something along those lines was it only the female pistachios that were pink <laughs> yeah the, the boy <laughs> ones were blue actually okay yeah, okay yeah. and then they had purple babies and then they <laughs> until the babies could pick their gender and uh-huh. then they were just whichever one they wanted to be oh that's it's sovereignty beautiful. of of pistachio life yeah it's absolutely beautiful if yeah. there's anything i stand that's why up for like in this world dollars per nut. <laughs> yeah they are overpriced yeah. they are overpriced what's the experience of cracking them open yourself but if there's anything i stand yeah. for in this world it's pistachio rights yeah you know oh, st- absolutely. the liberty of pistachios if there's, if there's anything i can be just like super polarized on mm-hmm. super super political that's it that is it choosing your pistachio coloring pistachio Peace the shields. That sounds like that sounds like you're saying like peace to something or someone. Peace to chios. It's kind of like those Cheetos. like intentional mispronunciations. Yeah, of you've words. done that like twelve times today. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I got it, I got it from Vine. Yeah, I got it from a Viner, <laughs> but he 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 just kept saying peace the chios, and I always say no. Wow. It, it makes it reminds me of like a French dude with like the the Peace French yeah with like talking with his. Oh wait, his, that's kind of Italian. Wait, this is this, <laughs> this is what is I see as Italian. Okay. I, th- this is like the, the three. Wait. This is the thing you put under and you punch somebody in the face. With, yeah, because you they saw it. Okay, they were looking under your waist. You know what that's from? No. Do you know the OG? What that's from? I'm gonna put these glasses on. By the way, you're like so good. Are I feel like I need to switch up the environment are since we we're do doing like back to back podcasts. Are we doing like a science experiment? Because I would be totally down for that. Oh my goodness! Where'd you get those? Do you like meth or something? Um, you say meth? Yeah. Did I cook it, Walter White? Yeah. Well, I was on just my like, Walter you White know, you shit. have those like like protection goggles on your face that are like a, for like science experiments, and I uh-huh. just don't know what other science experiments you'd be do- doing down here. That's a good point. What else would I do with my life besides cook meth if it's science related? Yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. But anyway, oh, I was gonna tell you that this. Can you quit pointing at me? No. It's I rude. Whenever you point, there were three fingers pointing back at you. I just want you to know that. But this thing, okay, I don't. That thing, it was started on Malcolm in the Middle. They did it on Malcolm in the Middle. That one episode, and then the and then the the one kid. I think he's in like a wheelchair or something, and he really got him because you know he's always sitting, so it's like always. I don't know, I don't know. And then he like beat the crap out of the other guy. I love that show, but it did start on that. I don't know if it started what? on that, but it was on that. Yeah, I think. That's really surprising. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. That's we'll interesting. Have to, we'll have to look that up after this to make sure I'm correct. Uh-huh. Otherwise, just completely throw this whole thing out. I wish I had somebody that could just, like, hit the computer. Like, yeah. you're just like, yo, pull that up, man. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure, Call like, me. 99% of the things that come out of my lo- my mouth are just, like, slightly wrong. Like, just ever so slightly. Ever I'm, so slightly. Ever so slightly. I'm sure I'm saying things so incorrect. Like, not enough that I'm noticing it, but other people are going to be like, she doesn't know her Malcolm in the Middle. Dumb. You know? That was That'd be really that 70s show. Yeah, well, I know it wasn't that because I'm obsessed with that 70s show. I know it was Malcolm in the Middle, but I don't know if it was exactly like that thing. But I think. But regardless, that's crazy. That's crazy because that's one of those things in culture that you don't necessarily understand yeah. or know where they came from. But like everybody knows what the yeah. fuck that is. Yeah, those oh, people absolutely. our age do. Yeah, yeah. No, I I don't know. I don't know where the gap was between Malcolm in the Middle doing it and like us doing it now. Mm-hmm. But. 
I don't know how that came in and like how that happened, how that evolved, but it was on there. I don't know what the correlation to today doing it is, but it was there. Yeah. Oh, that's wild. Have you speaking of that? You know Frankie Muniz. Is it the the main actor? Yes. Have like you heard Malcolm of, himself. Yeah, yeah. Have you heard about his like ridiculous memory loss? What? He had like so he he came out and talked about it. I don't remember what happened to him. It might have been like a bunch of bad concussions or some some crazy thing, but he does not remember filming like large portions of Malcolm in the Middle. Like, <laughs> he will say that he was like <gasps> I ha- I do not remember it. I have I what? I watched the episodes and I have no memory of it. It's like a thing he came out on like Twitter or something talking about, but it's like really weird. It's like one of those things that you're like what? Like, you just don't remember any... Yeah, it's really weird. And there's, like, clear evidence. Yeah, yeah. It's just, like, a thing. And it's just, everyone's accepted it. I don't remember what the... Again, it's kind of like the opposite of the Mandela effect. Oh, okay. I was literally thinking about the Mandela effect, like, probably 30 seconds ago. Uh-huh. So I think you read my mind. I think we started... That was the Mandela effect in itself. I don't know if I have a full understanding of the Mandela effect enough to actually apply that. I don't think you do. Was that was that the wrong application? No. So technically, inform me. The the Mandela effect is okay. So one example that's very well known. Okay. So the reason that it is called the Mandela effect Nelson is Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela. Yeah. They thought like certain people think he was like imprisoned or I don't know what the exact story was, but the basically the thing is is there's a bunch of parallel universes or parallel timelines or something like that, and we are slightly switching between them. And so tiny things will change. The multiverse. People, yeah, well, absolutely. But so tiny things will change, and people will, like, not realize it until, like, later. So, like, have you heard, like, the example of, like, the Berenstein Bears versus, like, the Berenstain Bears? Like, you know Berenstain Bears? I don't know what that is. Oh, okay. Well, it's like a child book, whatever. And so I remember it as the Berenstain Bears, but it's actually the Berenstain. It's like S-T-A-I-N and not S-T-E-I-N. And like, that's like a weird thing that everyone's like, I swear it's the Berenstain Bears. And, but it's like, no, it's actually Berenstain. And, and so, for that to happen on a mass scale. Yeah. And was it was it just a mass scale mispronunciation of the so. word? I think so. And I think that's like most of what happens with the Mandela effect is there's something that like we have re- – people have just horrific memory, absolutely terrible. Like we can – there's so many times that people make up stories in their minds. You know what I mean? Like you'll say like did this happen and you just can't remember. And so it fa- – like it fabricates in your mind that it did happen. Like a lot of times like – In the collective unconscious of yeah. the human population. And so I, I don't know. There's just dun, like – Dun, dun, dun. Yes. But yeah, so there's just like uh, there's a lot of different examples of it, but I don't know. I think that I think that the multiverse is real. I think that anything is possible. So it could be a thing, but I think most of the time it's just okay, we all just remembered it wrong. We all just mm. didn't pay attention to it. We all assumed that Berenstein sounds like Steen, which sounds Jewish. I know this is like weird, but that like name sounds like Jewish like I know like whatever. So I think that people probably thought, okay, that's just what they assumed it was, but then like Stain is less like well known you know what i mean like a lot like baron stain is like less people don't identify with it as well as baron stein okay so let's let's think back on the actual like the miscommunication of mandela like like the mass scale of people misunderstanding and thinking that he was dead yeah back whenever he was just imprisoned yeah I don't uh, was this in the 90s it. i think so which I've heard of this. I've dumb. heard of this, but it's always attributed to the Mandela effect whenever it's been explained to me. Yeah. So I that's that's what I would assume. I it just seems like like a few people start believing it, but how does that information spread well, so rapidly? And the thing is, people just don't remember. That's the problem. Is people what? Pe- I think people just don't have good memories. And so you ask, if I ask you a question and I gave you two options, you're gonna pick one. You know what I mean? You're gonna pick one because it sounds realistic. You know, if I asked you, is like. I don't know. Someone, someone is like, is Betty White alive? She better fucking be alive. Yeah, don't but you like, do? But, but don't like, you put this on me right now? But like, I but love like, me some Betty I mean, White. Like most people would be like, yeah, oh yeah, she's alive. But what if, she, like, what if she wasn't, and we none of us remember it? You know what I mean? Like, there's just certain things that like people just don't know the answer to it, and I think they just make it up. So I feel like with like that. Well, that also thing, could be attributed to like the lack of media coverage, yeah. attributed to like her death. Maybe they covered it for like six hour time span on one day of the entire year because they didn't they found her death to be trivial trivial enough to like not necessarily document and publicize but but i don't know i just don't don't know know. i don't know i don't know i just i know how i just know that people have just terrible memories that's another thing i don't know why i'm that for that confirmation bias to happen on a mass scale is fucking weird it is fucking weird it is 
it is but I, again i just think people have terrible memories and like i always bring up psychology but my ap psych class uh junior year of high school shout out mr gilbert great guy um awesome class learned so much but they were we were talking about how people will like especially in interrogations and things like that they will like kind of get something in their head and they won't remember the story at all but they'll just just tell it like they do or like a lot of times do you have you ever heard a story this is weird for me so i'll hear a story or there's like a there's like a couple of family stories that we have like that we tell like they're they're funny they're jokes but i wasn't even born for one of them there's one that i always tell but i've heard it so many times that i can picture it in my head as if it was a memory i know that's so weird Ooh. but do you want to hear the story it's kind of it's kind of weird yeah, yeah, yeah. If you okay. think it's worth bringing up, yeah, absolutely. Okay, it's, it's just funny. It's just stupid. It's just a stupid story, and my brother's going to kill me for telling this. But so That's when fine. My, when Can I, I take a shot before? Yeah. Okay. One sec. Because I know you won't forget that point, and I really want to take this yeah. second shot of the night. Are you ready? Are you just going to stare at me while I'm going to absolutely just stare at you. Okay. Here's my straight poker face. Ready? Okay. I love the water chase. Beautiful. Anyway, so my brother... When he was, like, two, he, like, got mad at my other brother and, like, peed in his ear, okay? <laughs> like, I know that's, like, really weird, but he was, like, literally two years year old, and I think that's how he, like, decided to, like, get back at my other brother. Wait, wait, so he was two and peed two in— Two or three. I, something well, like How that. old was the other brother? Eight, nine, maybe. He was, like, sitting oh, there— Oh, the two-year-old peed in the eight-year-old. Yeah, yeah. That's actually pretty creative. He just, like, peed on him. That's, I, that's and like, I don't actually, know if it, that, I mean, I it's kind of creative yeah. as a comeback, you know? Yeah. It's like, I like, he avoided violence. Like yeah. he, at least he, like, he, he had the ethical understanding <laughs> to avoid, like, hey, I don't want to hurt him. Yeah, but. I just want to ve- make him very uncomfortable. Yeah, but w- I, I don't know. I don't even know. I don't really know how the story went besides that and they're watching Space Jam at the time. But I swear. Oh, he was awake? Oh, yeah. They were just. He pulled this off while his other brother was awake? They were fighting. And he was standing, like, standing next to him and he just pulled it out and started peeing on him. They were fist fighting or yelling? No, they were just arguing back and forth. They were watching Space Jam. My mom was sitting there, and then my mom was like, oh, my God, and, like, has to pick him up, and he's just, like, peeing across the living room. And I'm telling you the story, but I wasn't even born yet. I, I swear I tell it like I was there, but I was in my mom's stomach. You probably just heard it so many times. I've that heard it so many times that I picture it, and I feel like I've been— It's probably just the way the memory works. Yeah, and it's weird. And, like, also, like, okay, so babies don't remember things before the age of three. That's what I— heard there's uh infantile amnesia and babies brains like reroot themselves and you forget most things and so a lot of times people will have memories like they swear they remember something from when they were like two but it'll just be they saw a picture of it and they fabricated the story into like whatever but i just think it's so interesting because there's so many things that i know that i don't actually remember but i fabricated it in my head like from pictures or from stories i've heard but it feels like i was there and i feel like it was my memory isn't that weird I feel like that's the intriguing element of listening to a story. Like, because, yeah. for example, whenever you were telling me that story, I was thinking of the heroic moment when your brother just takes his cock out <laughs> and pees on your other brother. And then what I was imagining, and whether this is falsified or not, uh, what I was imagining is a baby. Like, I, I, I have these these characters pictured in my mind. Yeah. So I'll just walk you through, like, the, the picture of what I have, like, very um, – however. Anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll walk you through what I was imagining in my mind. I'm imagining an eight-year-old fully clothed, and then he's sitting on the couch. And, again, this might not even be accurate based on your description, but a two-year-old gets mad, pretends that he's going to get, like, a drink or something so that he's distracted, makes sure his brother is fully attentive on watching the screen, and then he walks up from behind him, catches him off guard, and instead of inflicting violence, he nobly whips out his <laughs> cock, and pees in his brother's ear, and then the other brother reacts, and then the mom comes in, looks over, and is like, "Oh shit!" And, and oh, by the way, the, the your brother's naked besides wearing a diaper. I that's think all, I that's think, what I'm I imagining. Think, I think so yeah. And then your mom, I, I, this goes without saying, but is fully clothed and walks <laughs> over and picks up your younger brother, and then she's just like walking around as this baby's peeing everywhere. That, but like, like, for, <laughs> like that's like the beauty of of a story, right? I don't think like it you, was, it wasn't as like intricate and like well thought out as that it was more like l- literally just Caleb was sitting here Corey was standing next to him on the couch and just got mad and just turned around and started peeing that was it like it was just like it was just like ah, pee like so it if I didn't like, take the time to repeat that though then I would have this falsified yeah, memory of yeah. what the fuck I thought had happened in yeah. comparison to like Compared what to actually my happened falsified memory and that 
who, who knows what really happened? It's like a game of telephone. Yeah. That's Damn. Like, our whole life is a game of Damn. telephone. Damn. Yeah. Life. That's history, it, right? Yeah. History. Horrendous. Do we even know what happened? People are rewriting these books. Like writing out a lot of stuff. A lot of important stuff. Are you saying slavery didn't happen? No. Are you saying the Holocaust didn't happen? No, but they are writing out the Trail of Tears, which is... They're writing it out, like racing it? Yeah, they're like, they're saying things like, oh, the Indians just gave up their land. But it was like, no, we freaking killed everyone and took their mm. crap away from them. Yeah, so they're making, like, they're making, like, it's funny. I think we, I don't know when I talked about this, but, or with Here, hold that a little bit closer to your mouth. You have a great radio voice, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> anyway, um, but <laughs> if you read, like, our history book versus, like, um, you know, the British, I'll tell you, the Revolutionary War going to be so different, so different, and whose version yeah. of it is correct? You know, even, like, I'm sure, like, even, like, back whenever everything wasn't, like, you know, all sold by, like, Pearson or all sold by whatever, like, when, like, history books were just starting, I'm sure, like, the South had different history books than the North about, like, the Civil War. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, even on that scale, I'm sure it was different. You know what I mean? Like... Because right now it's kind of told from the North's perspective. Yeah. Because they were the victors. And yeah. also, like, we... At this point in human history, we deem their point of view and their standpoint and what they were fighting for to be more ethically and morally correct. Yeah, oh, absolutely. So we kind of like justify whatever violence they impose yeah, on the South. Yeah. But like the South maybe could totally twist that up so that yeah. it's not as like convoluted and, and biased against them so that they're yeah. like, this is why we are fighting. We are fighting for X, Y, and Z. And you could like, you could literally read it from the South's perspective and probably be rooting for the South in yeah. the war. Well, that's the thing is, like, people, it's, like, you can write any story and, like, make you root for who, like, the author can make you root for whoever they want you to. It's, like, weird because, you know, in a lot of times, like, movies or, like, things like that, they'll be, like, the bad guy or, like, someone literally just murdering people for no reason or just, like, doing ridiculous There's, stuff. There's, like, the element of persuasiveness writing yeah. history books. Well, history, That's so, fucking weird. Yeah, so I was going to say, like, you can, in, like, a fictional thing, you can make people literally like the person who is terrible, absolutely terrible, but then in that thing, that same thing goes over to history books, you can make them, like, you're going to make them like your country no matter what, so even if what you did is just horrific, you're going to make them look like the best, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, literally, us coming over here, and, like, Columbus, and, like, all those things, like, we took land, like, we did terrible things, and they mm -hmm. just don't say it like that, they're like, oh yeah, Columbus found this great new place, okay, first of all, I don't even think it was him, second of all, we there was native people here like it wasn't mm -hmm. like we found this new just plain chunk of rock that like, does kind of get it gets glorified instead of yeah instead of uh instead brought to of the like yeah rocks given. of what exactly happened you playing footsies with me <laughs> i didn't know what that was i'm stoically oh just gonna stare it's you down scary. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know how i feel about this my you're just really in my territory here did, did i did i invade i'm just gonna put my foot there okay i don't have you can, else to put you it. can i can be your foot rest yeah, my foot can you. be your foot rest you. i have nowhere else to put it some foot on foot action yeah. i used to like scrunch up my toes in my f in my shoes and like you like see them like you pretty much see my shoes like pulsing and then i'd be like oh yes look my shoes are having an orgy or my, my toes are having an orgy that's really creative <laughs> you're hilarious <laughs> i came up with that like i think i think I, I think i was like early high school like late late I'm taking my foot away. Middle it makes school. Me yeah. <laughs> Get some toe action or toes. No, I take I my no part of that. shoes off and our toes me, are like interlocked. Me and, no, like me and my weird, cousin do that sometimes. That's bizarre. It is very bizarre. It is. That's, we just like to see if we can. I don't think I can get my foot gapped enough. We both have really weirdly small toes. Oh, really? Just, yeah. You can maybe go in mine. Okay, that's we're, that's how we're that's done working. with that. Get yeah, let's away. move oh, on. Far okay. Away. No, no. Back but this, like, like, have you ever like. I mean, personally, I fantasize about this. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not gonna fuck about. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna joke about this. Go I was gonna to say I fantasize about this, but uh, like, have you ever imagined the world if World War Two would have gone in the Axis powers' favor? Like, if Germany would have won that oh. war, what would the no. modern world look like today? And I again, I, I was gonna say, have you ever fantasized like jokingly? And I was like, yeah, it's probably too far. But, <laughs> but um. Like, have you ever really like thought in like thought no. into depth like what the world would be like? And it, obviously, it's really you know really I, impossible to prognosticate exactly what would what what it would be like. But that's crazy because I it's a fucking weird thought. I think about a lot of weird things. I think of a lot of like weird scenarios and this and that and how anything is possible and like all this stuff. But I never really think about huge points in history going a different course. Like 
I don't know, what if we, like, things like that, like, what if they just, we were still living in that, you know what I mean? Like, what if, like, Hitler did what he wanted to do, and just never got taken out, and he had a successor, and you know what I mean? Like, like you were saying, like, what if that was just our world? Because it would be so different, even, like... Like, would the, would the U.S. still be a global superpower? Would Vietnam have happened? Would the Cold War have happened? Yeah. Would the, the fucking Korean War have happened? Like, yeah. would Iraq, Twin Towers, like... I mean, it, like, these are all considered, like, tragedies and bad things to a lot of people, depending on who you ask. But, like, would these things have happened and what other major world events would have happened and result instead? Yeah, I think, oh, everything – do you – are you a type of person that you think – there's, like – I feel like there's two types of people. Like, people think that everything, like, hap- like happens and is going to happen and happens for a reason and whatever, or that just everything is completely random. Because I think things are just, just so random. Like, there is all these options that could happen and just, like, one does. It depends what form of philosophy you're talking about. Like, if we're talking, like, secular views, or we could even bring, like, religion into this as well. I, just, I guess I just mean, like, do you think that if something was slightly different, if things were a little different, do you think, like, big events would still happen? I don't know. I think there are a lot of points of view you could take on that. That's you could true. take, like, the absurdist f- view, which is, like, a secular form of philosophy, which is kind of like nihilism in the aspect that, like, nothing matters, but simultaneously, like, it's... It's so ridiculous, therefore it's, like, laughable Yeah. because nothing matters. So it's, like, yeah. kind of like a liberating view on nihilism, if that I makes guess. sense. Yeah. That's that's my limited interpretation and understanding of that. But with that being said, uh, so, I mean, you could take that point of view. Like, nothing fucking matters at the end of the day. So, like, yeah. the, uh, the ultimate outcome of the world and good versus evil, uh, whether that duality is constantly in constant fluctuation. Yeah. Um, is does that matter like does if mm-hmm. if evil's on top for a temporary amount of time does it matter it's true I, and evil's always on top i I, <laughs> I, I don't know like what perspective i want to take on that but i i i don't know once i asked the question i was like i have no idea I don't, meaning, I don't even know what my own opinion is so why did i ask i will say that meaning itself like whether that be a human like a fundamental human instinct whether that be like biologically rooted or Whatever, I, I just 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 meaning itself, and the meaning I feel with like doing these podcasts, like this is this is very fulfilling to me. Yeah. Uh, the the meaning I feel doing like other activities that I enjoy, that I find like a lot of like passion, fulfillment, meaning behind those, that's fucking real. That is real as fuck. Then that is that's there's something that just goes off within all of us that is so incredibly important and necessary yeah i feel and uh so i that i would argue to the death of me that that is like that is real yeah but is the direction of the entire earth and like humanity's role in that is that meaningful is that your original question i have literally no idea at this point <laughs> i don't even know what i asked i kind of just went like a like on a mental like no, train yeah. track but no, i liked where you went because i was like once i asked i was like what am i saying honestly what am i saying sometimes i do that like i formulate like a thought in my head and then it comes out and i'm like man i wish i could have taken that back because i have no idea what i was trying to say mm-hmm. or, i mean i know what i was trying to say but i don't know how to get it across at all at all and the thought's already gone that's the problem yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't fully remember what you were asking, which I feel rude about. I but uh, I don't remember either. Yeah, I don't, I don't like. Does but let's let's just formulate this new question. Yeah. Like, does is it is it does the ultimate outcome of humanity, whatever the fuck we're trying to accomplish, whether that be aimless or or with some sense of goal in the end, would is that meaningful? I don't see. I've I I don't know. that's like one big thing is I think that each person's life like make it meaningful like make it like make yourself happy do what you want but I don't know I think people's lives can be meaningful I think they can do things that are meaningful to them and meaningful to the people around them to optimize their time that they are alive but I don't know what humanity as a whole's purpose is because what are we what are we doing like what are we that's like what's really weird is we're just like surviving what what are we? What's our greater purpose? I don't know. I mean, we're killing the earth. Surviving and good. reproducing is that yeah. our only is that our only meaning? I guess, is and it, it's like you can argue that. To, I mean, from and a it's like Darwinian perspective for sure. It's like, but like then I don't know. It's just so weird because also we're like, we want to keep doing that. We want to keep surviving. We want to keep reproducing. We want to keep doing that. But like, why? 
like I mean obviously like I like to live and I'm happy that I'm living and I I guess I, I want the people after me to be alive and have long happy lives too but just like in just the aspect of the human race as a whole I just don't know what the purpose is and I just don't think there I don't think there is one I mean why would there be like we're just I just we're just here and we can optimize our time here but we're just here from like an individual p- perspective yeah. but for like a collective perspective you don't fully yeah I don't know I don't know what humanities or any I mean any animal just I don't know what life like so like maintaining and growing the population and continuing the I mean, guaranteeing the continuation of the species, is that, like, is that our goal? Like you were saying, like, is that that our goal? I guess that's our goal. I mean, there's no, like, we just want to keep living. And, I mean, I think, like, I think the thing is, like, we're, like, well, we had a long, happy life. We want other people to experience that, too, I guess. But it's just, like, we just have ingrained in us that we have to continue the population. We have to continue the whatever. Same with animals. Same with, that's, like, the number one, like, thing rooted in people is just, like, continuing on and living Mm -hmm. and whatever. But it's just, like, like, why? Like, that's just, like, way beyond me, but, like... I love that thought, yeah, yeah. But I, and I, I think that, I think it's interesting because I think a lot of people are, like, have the nihilism I don't know how to say the word, view. Like, nihilistic. Nihilistic, yeah. Like, how they just, like, oh, like, life is pointless, blah, blah, blah. But I do think, I don't know what the point of human race, the human race is. I don't know what the point of life as, like, a long consistent thing is but i think that you can make your life meaningful enough to you like you're here you're alive like you might as well do everything you can to optimize it and okay yeah you might die one day and that might just you'll be gone and maybe no one will remember you or whatever but you you're here you might as well do something with it i think i just think that that's the whole thing is why why think about like the point of why you're alive when you can just like find ways to enjoy it mm. you know I don't know. Yeah. Like, I think pondering why you're alive and what's going to happen when you but die. But you could argue those ways that you're finding to enjoy that are going to be the point of your life, the yeah. meaning of your life. Yeah, and I mean, I mean, but I don't think that everyone has to have some huge meaning. You know, like if your meaning is just doing things that you enjoy and being with the people you enjoy and making them laugh and being happy, like that isn't like I think that's enough. Like I mean, obviously, like I would love to like say make some huge impact on like the world and like you know come up with some like medical advancement or do something like amazing but i think that people just put so much pressure on themselves that maybe your meaning just isn't that big you know yeah yeah maybe you're not as big of maybe you're just a pawn and not the not the queen in the chess game and that's okay because i think and who's to say that one's better or worse because all are necessary and all are necessary all of them are going to have their negative their negative fault they're gonna have their faults so you're kind of arguing that the the main from like an in like an individual's perspective an individual sense of meaning. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I think that, like, connecting with people and, like, all those things. I think you can gain most of your – a lot of meaning from, like, your relationships and connecting and stuff. But that also is just, like, your enjoyment and things like that. Like I said, like, your meaning comes from, like, what you like to do, who you connect with, things like that. But I don't think that you have to necessarily, like, improve the human race to have meant something. You know, if you just – Respect, yeah. I never really thought about it that way. If you just, like – I, I love the saying that's always like, even if you make one person's life better, you've changed the world. Like, I know that's like a lot of people, like a lot of teachers say that or like doctors, or like whatever. But I really like that because it's like you might not a tiny, only a tiny, tiny, tiny percent of people are actually going to change the world as we know it. But if you can positively in, interact and impact the people around you, that's doing so much more than you know, like just so much more. And then even at, like say you positive, say So you just do one nice thing for someone else. They could, that could be like a day that they're really down and they need someone to do something nice for them, you know? And then they're like, okay, well, I'm like happier now. You know what I mean? Like this one thing is like helped me and then maybe that'll make them somehow a slightly better person. And then like that, they can then bring that to their relationships. And so even if you're just impacting one person, you could be impacting so many more people than you even know. So that's like another thing that I think is cool is just like relationships and how they work like that. But I think that's a, big way to find meaning and impact people and change people's lives without actually doing it on a large scale you know what i mean absolutely absolutely and th- there's um i bet a lot of religions would argue going back to the topic of religion yeah uh, i think a lot of religions would pop possibly argue like that maybe your purpose is to mitigate as much suffering yeah. amongst the planet as you possibly can yeah and uh, the thing is i wish that more religious people actually understood that that is a huge part of religion because most people that 
I know that are super religious, they're camera the, died. It's still on. Yeah, uh, like it, it's done, but oh. it, the, the SD card just ran out. Oh. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna plug it up just so I can save battery oh. life. But hold that thought. Okay, I forgot what I was saying. No, I remember now. But, um, I think that she remembers now. Rem- remembers now. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Always, she always remembers when I'm not around. <laughs> oh, that was it. Yeah, that was perfect. <laughs> but um, anyway, I think that a lot of people forget that the point of religion should be to what would you say mitigate my mi- minimize min- mitigate collective human suffering. Yeah, I think that a lot of people that are religious really should realize that that is something they should be doing. But instead, they're just like, we just need to put our whole life for this religion, this whole life for God. But I think that in in helping people, in helping like. I can't say what you said, but doing that and like I'm going to say minimize suffering because I yeah can't. absolutely but synonymous like, same mi- thing. minimizing suffering and helping people and doing those things like especially for like Christianity like that is how you glorify God you know what I mean that that is how you live I like that because we were talking about the Western interpretation yeah, in comparison I, to the Eastern and I I like that collectivist point of view a lot more because yeah. the, the West is very selfish it's like how can I how further can my I individually further my relationship with God. I think that you can individually further your relationship with God by helping other people and doing God's work, so to speak. Which a lot of Christians do yes, carry out and yes. act on that. So not yes. to like to uh, criticize Christianity too oh, much, but like all. a lot but of people find that they need to force their beliefs because what worked for them is going to work for everybody, yeah. and that's a very limiting and kind of kind of a what's the word I'm looking for? It's kind of a unrealistic approach yeah. to like like. One persuasion yeah. in general. And, and like and like just because being really religious minimized your suffering doesn't necessarily mean it's going to minimize someone else's suffering. One size but, doesn't fit all, bitch. Yeah, but helping someone, you know, even just get a, just a supportive a supportive person in their life or just helping them when they're down or something like that, that that can help them and then maybe maybe eventually they'll be in a place where they can be mm. like, Oh my gosh, this religious person helped me they must be awesome because, like, they are following this religion. They helped me, and I am now in a good enough place that I can go and follow that religion or whatever. So, like, maybe that will happen eventually. But it shouldn't be, like, your ultimate goal shouldn't be to just force your religion on people. It should be to help them become, like, get in a p- place where they can, like, then freely think and have enough whatever to whatever. But I was going to say something else. Oh, with that, um, you know, I'm a religious studies minor, like I said. But a lot of times what I learn in class is – People forget how loving Jesus was and how Christianity is actually just so much more accepting than some Christians want to give credit, give it credit for. You know, like in the Bible, Jesus loved everyone. He, um, what, what, what was that? He like, he, tr- I mean, he treated women equally and he like, I don't remember what the stories were, but he did things for people that no one else would dare do for people. You know what I mean? There was mm-hmm. people that were looked down in society and he helped them and he told people to help them. And he said, love thy neighbor and all these things. And that's like, that's what Christianity should be doing. You know what I mean? They should be doing these things that Jesus wanted them to do. So what flaws, misconceptions, misunderstandings do well, you think like Christianity I, as a whole, at least based on your limited experience with those people kind of like trying to live that truth i i think people i think i think a lot of christians just forget that the root of their religion should be loving and helping i think that they forget about that they just think i can be a good christian but i can still be a shitty person and that's what just kills me is if you're going to be a good per a like if you're going to be a good christian like doing that is by being a good person just i by see helping that people i see that and like not just just and the other thing that really bothers me is when I know I know I I know that people can go and they can believe and all this stuff and still obviously like make mistakes and do things that aren't necessarily following their religion's rules or whatever but mm-hmm. if you're just blatantly being a bad person that is something you can control that is something you can change and you know what I mean like I mean there's certain things that you might not necessarily agree with and you want to like bend the rules a little or whatever but just like being a bad person that's just like never going to be like that's just never going to be like the christian way or whatever so yeah yeah, i just think i just think if do you think some people use it as justification oh absolutely i think i just it's so warped it's just people use religion just not even christianity but a lot of religion as justification to do things that they shouldn't or see that especially i mean 
so that they can they can kind of uh, get that feeling of importance, so that they can derive sense sense of uh, of pride in the fact that hey, I can do what I want because I am a Christian, and ultimately God will love me no matter what. Almost yeah. or it is it is kind of interesting because I think some people I I think some people um, I think they hold themselves or they say that they are Christian and they think that they are better than you because they're Christian. But I could be like, well, I'm not necessarily the same belief system as you, but I'm I'm a better person than you. I live out good mm-hmm. morals. Like, I try to be nice to people. I love my neighbor. I do all these things. So you might say that you're a Christian, but I'm living out your morals better than you. And I think that's one really interesting thing is people just who talk the talk but don't walk the walk. I think that's yeah. just – I just think you either need to – Underst- actually understand what the root of the religion is and try to live it or don't say that you are this perfect Christian. Just, like, you just can't. You just can't be. First of all, you just can't be. But you can say that you're religious, but don't go being that, like, don't make religion the center of who you are if you're not actually going to go all in on it. It's like it. hypocritical justification. Yeah, I just, oh, I can't I think my that. biggest complaint is kind of going back to what we were saying before is that they, these people start going down, I mean, however deep down this, this darker path or this not so good path for them. And maybe they lack the proper guidance and they go a little bit further than they probably should be. And then they somehow, somewhere, shape of an, some, some form, in some way, shape or form, they come across this, this sense of purpose and the sense of direction. The sense of direction they've never had before. And this kind of steers them away from this path that wasn't very fulfilling, didn't make them feel that great. And then it steers them right towards what they define as like the good and then they think their own personal experience, since they were saved, everybody else needs to be saved. Yeah. And then, I mean, you, you shared that story earlier. I think a lot of people experience this in college, yeah. is they will almost like a fucking jaguar going through the Amazon, just slowly just just moving, taking step by step, and then they, they spot you yeah. that they perceive as like an elk yeah. or a, 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 a helpless fawn. Help yeah. us fawn that is misguided and misdirected in life yeah. and that needs some sense of purpose like they they once were. They were they yeah. see you as yeah. lost and they diagnose you before like, they even I before will help you. Okay. And then, then they reach out to you. Yeah. And they're like, Hey, we should hang out sometime. And you're like, Yeah, man, for sure. Let's let's kick it. Yeah. And then they they are ready to strike and pounce as soon as like they before even trying to attempt to connect with you because they yeah. they think they need to persuade you to their form of beliefs and it just comes off as very disingenuous yeah it it's so hard because it, then it's like who are are they who are they actually like close with who are they friends with who are mm-hmm. who are their people in their lives like who are they just trying to convert and who are they actually close with it gets like it gets almost like kind of crazy like i i understand what they're trying to do and i think it's awesome that they're trying to help people and stuff but it gets to a point where it's like people don't trust you anymore and it's almost mm. weird it's just weird it, it's weird if you get to that point where someone you just like then you kind of get that reputation of being that person that is just trying to convert everyone it's like a salesman yeah, like you kind of interpret them the exact is. same way as a salesman and you're like, like what the fuck like are you on, like are, are you being like genuinely wanting to be my friend right now or are you being my friend so that you can eventually persuade me to something you want to – like you're not trying you're, – I mean you're, you're trying to sell me something. You're not trying to take my money away from yeah. you. But you're trying to – You're trying to sell me something. I mean, yeah. You're, you're trying you to can, sell me something. Yeah. You can, you can sell me on something without taking my money. Like, I'm, Absolutely. Like, you can be you know, metaphorically sold on something, like on an idea. Absolutely. Ideologically sold. Ide- yeah, yeah, absolutely. Just because they're ideologically possessed. Yeah. And incapable of considering other points of view. I'm just kidding. That's a gen- hasty generalization. Hasty generalization. But, but it's not a lot. But of, it, it's, it, I mean, that's probably a stereotype, and it, yeah. it is for some fucking reason because a lot of fucking Christians are that way. Now, that's the thing I was going to point up is I, something that is just really hard is a lot of, a lot of bad people just happen to be Christians. And that, like, that stinks because it's like, you're not bad because you're a Christian at all. You're just a bad person, and then you give, christianity or whatever religion you are a bad name that's that's like one thing is just in general like when someone's just a bad person then they just like so happen to be like a blues fan you know what i mean like they're not bad because they're a blues fan they're just a bad person and they give the rest of the group a bad name but that's one thing is <laughs> it's it's no like college acceptance rate you know like yeah. there's there's no like 
okay, you get into the, you get into Christianity, you get accepted, you get accepted. Ah, uh, you're you're. Let's not. I don't know yeah. if I want to take you in. It's like they're they're accepting everybody. So. Yeah, but it, and so I hate that because then there's people that are like Christians in the media that are like you know like horrible to like people who are gay or people who are like women just bad to women or just like in general they just are mean to people and they use their religion to somehow just justify it when it's so not their religion at all like uh -huh. not loving someone and not accepting someone is not the christian way like i know that they like say that it says that in the bible or whatever but i think above all else god wants you to love everyone and to be kind to everyone take out I, I need to say this clapping take out the fucking dogma what like the like like this is my way or the highway oh, yeah, kind of like yeah. the, this is the only way to see things yeah that's not what real thinking is real thinking yeah. is considering a lot of different fucking points of view yeah and so and i just duking it out in your own mind and, and considering those points of view with without without fucking um Making one of the arguments like a lot weaker, and yeah. it's like a post hoax, a post hoax. Is that post, what it's called? Post like you, hoc. Post, post, post hoc, post hoc, ego proctor hoc. Is it or, like is a pro is a post hoc like you have one argument and then you make the other argument weaker to kind of belittle the other I argument to make remember. your argument making those, like. But I don't remember it. Okay, I, I think that's what it is. There's a lot of them. Well, or it's, a, it's a straw, straw man, man argument. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah. 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 You, you make build, one. You build the other the other argument up to look stupid so that your argument looks awesome or like you build the other one up to look so weak that yours looks great and that's what a lot of people do in politics that's politics. what a lot of people do in religion Which whenever trying to attempt because they're not trying they're they're giving a half-assed try at building up a straw man argument about what islam is and maybe they're justifying things to themselves so that they can oh this is what islam is it's yeah. It's just a bunch of Muslims, and all they're trying to do is come over here and bomb our country, even yeah. though we got a fuck ton of them living in this country. And um, it's oh, that I is just, one thing that just bothers me so much because it's because, straw man thinking. It's yeah. like internal dialogue is like straw man thinking to justify your own beliefs. Yeah. It's fucking stupid. Yeah. It's a dumb way to think, I, and uh, it's dangerous. It is very. It's dangerous. dangerous. Closed mindedness, just in general, is what gets people killed. It's just, it just is. That's what all the worst things have happened. Like, like just being closed minded is just never a good thing. And it's, it's like you said, it's, it's not, it's not accepting those that are diverse, those that are different. It's not loving them. Yeah. Because I mean, love is going to require some level of acceptance. Yeah. So you're, and you're not going to. And when I say love, I don't even mean that like, oh, I, like, I love you. It's just, it's literally just having a love for humanity and equality and things like that. It's just like, you just, you, you don't know them, but you have to not love them i mean not love them in the sense of like love but like uh, respect them and accept them and things like that it just that's that's more the christian way than just telling someone that they're wrong that is not what it should be it, it is not that i mean god loves everyone like he forgives you of your sins that's the entire thing that christianity is based on that he forgives you of their sins or of, of your sins so we should be able to do that too even if it's not i mean not necessarily that diversity as a sin uh, at all but just anything that someone might think is wrong or whatever like you can think that it's wrong but you have to accept them because that's what like you know what i mean i don't know i'm kind of following i just it just frustrates me basically the bottom line is it frustrates me when people try to justify disliking someone or something because of their religion that that's basically that's bullshit. they basically say my religion says this is wrong i don't like you but gays are a great example. Yeah, but in reality, first of all, does Christianity say it's wrong? That's still unclear. I mean, I mean, God, yeah, yeah, but like, also, it says that like women like cutting their hair or like getting tattoos or like, I don't know, do being human beings basically is wrong. And so, if it's maybe to justify their discomfort with the thought of some like a man being with another yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think that they just were like, okay, this is wrong. Like they just think that it's wrong. Like, and so they like are using that they're using their, their religion to justify it but in reality what they should be doing is okay maybe it is uncomfortable to me but god still loves you because you are still a human being you are still his creation so i'm going to love you too i'm going to accept you too because that is what god would want mm. and that is just the bottom line is god would want people to be accepting and people are not accepting and they they just are not living out the religion by being just assholes basically and not accepting people just stop using your religion to stu to to hate on people right right period like that's all it is just stop using re your religion to be a dick end of sentence yeah yeah and think it through th for yourself yeah 
Yeah. God, God, there's there's just there's so much on religion I could talk about. I don't even know. What did you say, What did you know. say earlier? It was like three. There are three different things that all religions have in common, well, like end suffering. I think. I think. I mean, this isn't what's, like. What's the existence of the afterlife? Like, yeah, like finding. Fi- or, I keep hitting this table. I just keep slam, slamming. You're up. You're talking with emphasis. Yeah, it's so. It's drama. J- j- dramatic speaking. Yeah. I was so gonna say trauma. Dramatizing. Tra- traumatiz- it's traumatizing. I'm traumatized. But um, I think it, it's like. Finding um, meaning in the after- afterlife, okay. or like finding what happens when you you die, minimizing suffering. So an explanation for whenever you die. Yeah, I think. Okay. Well, I think overall. And finding a meaning as well. Finding meaning, I think, minimizing suffering and like the afterlife. Those are like the three big things that most religions have in common. But I would say the number one thing is just explaining the unknown, because if it you, I think it's really Ooh. interesting. You go well, you go back to like Greek mythology and stuff, and they just were like. The sun, it's going across the sky. Well, we have chariots, so it moves, like, the same way. So it must be some guy up there just, ca- like, carrying the sun across the sky with a chariot. Like a that simple w- explanation. Yeah. I love it. And, and, well, it was, that was literally all they knew. They could not fathom that it could be something else. So they were like, that's what it is. You know what I mean? And, like, that's, like, how religion started was they had no explanation. They had no science. They had n- They had no idea what anything was. And instead of being terrified that this flaming ball of fire is just rotating around you, and sometimes it's not there, it's dark, you know what I mean? Like, that could be terrifying if you don't know what it is. I could not live back in But you need some explanation. But you need some explanation, so you just start a religion. What's, what's the need for explanation come from? I think it's just fear. I think people are just terrified. To, like, eradicate fear to give some form of comfort within the explanation of why something is the way it is? I, th- I think I think I think people are so scared of the unknown. I think that is the thing is people are terrified of the unknown, so they just are like, well, this is why, just make make it up. That's kind of a a conclusion I drew the other day, as I was telling you before. Is that um, I don't know, just it just just I need to get more comfortable with the unknown. Yeah, the concept of like that the the chaotic unknown is inevitable and as long as i continue to exist tomorrow is always uncertain yeah. like the 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 full meticulous details of tomorrow they're uncertain oh absolutely so like how do you befriend that i don't know like I how do you how I, do you dissipate the fear you I, I don't think you do i think i think for us we have enough level of comfort that we have certain things that we know to be true we know uh, i mean we think we think that the sun is going to rise we generally know that we will have a house and we have our food and we have our whatever. So we, we're pretty comfortable in our like day to day lives. But that's why I think like those things that we know, I think people are comfortable with that. But like even for us, like thinking to the future, like we're like we have no idea where our lives are gonna go. Mm-hmm. We have no idea, but we I think we are just so like, okay, well, but we at least know what's gonna happen like tomorrow. So I think we like use that like immediate knowing to somehow be like, okay, well, there'll just be enough tomorrows that eventually it'll be figured out. I, I That is at least how it is for me. I, I'm just like, I have no idea how it's going to happen in the future. I have no idea what's going to happen. But I at least know that, like, if I take it one day at a time, like, I can expect what I expect tomorrow, even, like, a week out, even a couple months out. But like, how do you deal with the things that are so unexpected? I don't know. Like, that's chaos, and that's you just inevitable. Do. I, it's I, inevitable. That's true, but then things that happen that are so unexpected, I think the fear of them not n- – I think – not knowing that they're going to happen and then them happening you just like you just take it you just take it as it is and you go on you know what i mean like yeah fear is scary or uh, the unknown is scary but since it's so i don't know how to say this we we don't know what's going to happen and that's almost good i don't know you could you could find comfort in that thought yeah so that's my question is how do you befriend that how do you how do you find comfort in that thought because it's it's tip the typical initial response is that it's fearful. Yeah. It's something to be fearful of. I don't tomorrow's well, uncertain, tomorrow's unknown. We don't but, know what's going to happen. But tomorrow. also it's unknown, but it's not unknown to a point. Like it's known to a point. Like we in our minds right now we think tomorrow the sun will come up. We will wake up. We will go about our days. We will start school back up in two months. You know what I mean? Like we have these things that in our mind they are going to happen. And that's the order. And, and yeah, and we might in the back of our minds, like, if we were wired a different way, which we're not, we could just freak out about every possible thing that could happen. We could be like, 
the sun could burn out tomorrow. We could get hit by a meteorite. Someone could blow us up. Like, there are so many things that could happen, but you don't just sit here and think, oh, my God, like, my house is literally going to blow up. I'm literally, like, all these bad things are going to happen. You just think, I don't know exactly what's going to happen, but I do know this. I do know this. I do know this, even though you don't necessarily know it. But I think we're wired to, like, expect that these knowns are going to happen. So Mm -hmm. I don't think we necessarily think about all of the unknowns in like a super scary way like of the future you know what i mean absolutely absolutely and that's that's the planning side that's the orderly side yeah but the chaotic the disaster the unknown and we just don't think about that like i don't think that some horrific event is going to happen tomorrow and i mean like you're driving back to st louis tomorrow you don't think like car accident you don't think like you don't consider these things a lot of i'm I'm sorry to say that but i mean you just don't you don't consider these potential outcomes well and i don't you know people are like Yo, like the world could end anytime. You know, yeah. pollution, not great. But we, like, a lot of uh, this is like another thing with going back to when we were talking about like people are covering stuff up in the media. They, like, scientists are so scared. Like, people are actually terrified that our world is going to end before our lives are over. But people don't take that seriously. People are literally just so stuck in the fact that we're going to keep going that we don't, we're not doing anything. Because it's all we've ever known. We've, we've only ever known that. We do not actually, th- like, I mean, I, in the back, I mean, part of me is like, okay, I, I mean, I'm a scientist, if you will, because that's my major. I'm a science major. So that part of me is like, oh my God, like this could actually happen. But the just normal, like everyday me part, like side of me is like, oh, that won't happen. Like, Mm -hmm. it'll be fine. And we'll just like live a normal life. Like, I'm like, what, it'll might affect someone like down the road, but like, we're going to be fine. Right. You know? And that's like the, the crazy thing is we don't realize that like shit could hit the fan any second. We just don't expect it to. Mm-hmm. We just do not expect those terrible things to happen. We really don't. And that's crazy to think about, actually. It's crazy. That we actually have crazy. really positive outlooks on life. And we think that good things are going to happen, mainly. It's a little bit off topic, but I read a quote the other day. It was like, history, if you look at history, you're going to read. You're going to see a lot of human pride, a lot of human ego, a lot of people betraying each other. And then we think the future is going to be different. Yeah. Like we have this, like irrational optimism we really do i think that i think that's very true because we we think that we're it's and it's almost like we think we're going in the right direction you know like and we are i mean we are getting better we're not you know we're not you know. do you think a lot of that's like based in the false sense of confidence because of our technological and innovative progress like, do you think that, do you think we find a, a, like an unnecessary amount of confidence and comfort in that? I don't know. Cause that's, that's considered human progress to a lot yeah. of people. If you ask what well, is human progress, it's like, Oh, we have artificial intelligence has made a lot of breakthroughs. Yeah. So have you seen computers lately? Computers are pretty fucking cool. Look at my iPhone. My iPhone yeah. can record but every, every progress we make in that aspect. There's going to be an equal and opposite downfall. You know, like I, I really do think that like all the technology progress we've made, I mean, it's it's doing bad things for the planet. It's doing bad things to us. Like, I don't think that it's gonna p- progress to a point and then it's gonna go backwards. I think. Like, um, I don't I don't know, but I just don't I don't trust it. Not that I'm too skeptical, but just, do we even know how the ancient Egyptians like what happened in their civilization? Do we even I know? No, there's a lot of civilization we don't know don't know things about. We really? don't know a lot of things. There's so many things we don't know. A lot of ancient civilizations that weren't that long ago that. We went away for no fucking reason that we don't fully understand. That, that I don't know enough on these topics. I'm just... Well, that brings up something my dad always says. Well, I don't know if he always says it, but he said it before. He has pointed out the fact that every major civilization ever has fallen. But we are a huge civilization, like the United States, and we haven't yet. There has yet. to be a down... Yet. That's the thing is there has to be a downfall. And that's what's terrifying is... And everybody every, doesn't want to assume it's in our lifetime. Yeah, every major civilization has fallen. And I just do genuinely think what goes up has to come down. I don't think anything can last forever. I don't think that any society will lo- will ever last forever. It's going to come down. And but then we, every beginning is going to be an end. Yeah, and we don't know when that's going to be. And we're... I mean, we as a, as a race, I'm, I'm sure we'll go extinct. We don't know why that's going to be. Yeah, we have no idea. And that's like... That's the thing is... We could all be freaking out, like, at every second because there's so many unknowns like that. But at the same time, we're just like, well, I mean, like, whatever. We'll just, like, start schooling too much and then we'll, like, graduate and then, like, ah, something will happen. You know what I mean? Like, Then I'll figure out a job. Yeah, and then. eh. Very worried about ourselves, not on the mass scale. Yeah, yeah. 
and a lot of people assume it's going to be climate change. Like whenever people like if somebody was going to be listening to this conversation right now, they'd be like, yeah, they'd be like, oh, like I bet a lot of people would be assuming climate change. I mean, Absolutely. that's what's been popping in my head. But me too. Who knows? A fucking meteor could come. Yeah. Yeah. Apophis. Have you ever heard of that? Like, I think it's 2023. There's this meteor that if it goes in a small gravitational keyhole, the the, the, the fucking odds are like one in 20,000. So it's yeah. very, very yeah. improbable that this is actually going to happen. But if it if it slips through a small gravitational keyhole, then maybe maybe the year that the keyhole thing will happen will be in 2023. But at some point, it's like set back in seven years. It'll fall within the same rotation around the sun that it's going to collide with the earth. Yeah. I actually have heard something about that. I don't I don't It's called Apophis. Haven't heard the name, haven't heard much about it, but I have heard something along those lines. And it's really interesting because so my physics teacher, you know, I'm spin four days a week, two and a half hours in there. We talk about physics some, but most of the time he talks about stuff like that. He talks about technology being like the bane of our existence and he talks about like climate change and things like that. And it's really interesting because he's really he's really scared me. Honestly, he has made me uh, like terrified of the future. He's made me terrified of everything we're doing. And it's really weird because it's just supposed to be like a physics class. But I'm learning about the horrors of humanity, basically. In the, it. Uh, the end of the world. Just like just like from him, like throwing in a comment here and there. But it's really made me think a lot about a lot of things. But yeah. Oh, goodness. It's called nine 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 four two Apophis. I don't know why the numbers are necessary, but uh, because there was a, like nine hundred or nine 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 four three before that Apophis. No, I'm just I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was like I was like oh okay that, that makes sense. Uh, um, so this is a three hundred seventy meter diameter near Earth asteroid that caused a brief period of concern in December of two thousand four. Because initially, observations indicated a probability of up to 2.7% that it would hit Earth on April 13, 2029. Additional observations provided improved predictions that eliminated the possibility of impact on Earth or the Moon in 2029. However, until 2006, a possibility remained that during the 2029 close encounter with Earth, Ap Apophis would pass through a gravitational keyhole, a small region no more than about 0.5 mile wide or 0.8 kilometers that would set up a future impact exactly seven years later on april 13 2036 this possibility kept it at level one on the torino impact hazard scale until august 2006 when the probability that apophis would pass through the keyhole was determined to be very rare or b very small and apophis's ratings on the torino scale was lowered to zero Man, what's crazy? The one thing that I, I mean, I think that's so. It's, it's so it's not gonna hit. Well, one can help. One can hope. But what I think is crazy about what you read to me was the fact that they could predict the day. You know what I mean? That is crazy. That's crazy. That's like that many years out. That is twenty five years in advance. That's a math to shit. the day. Ooh. That's that's crazy. That's really weird. Man. Oh, okay, in 2008, NASA reaffirmed the chance of Apophis impacting Earth in 2036 as being 1 in 45,000. So it's super low. Okay, chance, but I'm still but stressed. Yeah, now right, I'm, gonna, right, right, I'm not going to be able to sleep at night. Like, I know, right? Like, Apophis. Apophis, why, you, me. why are you doing this? Yeah, but, oh, but the amount of things that, like, could kill us but don't. Like, have you, have you ever seen, like, A Thousand Ways to Die? Yes. The amount of things that we live through is just insane because the amount of things that could kill us and have killed people is crazy. Like, we live through things every single day. And, like, especially, like, germs and, like, viruses or, like, just things that get on us that, like, our body fights off. That's insane. The amount of stuff that our body fights off for us. And, like, this is, like, something that I learned in genetics. But we have, like, something around, like, one to four, like, cancerous cells in our body, like, every single day that our, that our body fights off. And that's Ooh. that's why like cancer is insane is because it there are so many there are so many things in your body that are that are programmed to fight cancer. So whenever you actually get it and it actually develops, that's why it's so hard to defeat is because your body already has so many natural defenses that anything man made is like what could be better than your body's natural. I mean, you know what I mm -hmm. mean? Like so that's like one thing that's crazy is like your body like 
Is that with a lot of diseases, though? Yeah, I, I would say so, yeah. Your body I, already has a, a your natural body already way has to so defend many, it? Yeah, and so that's what's crazy is, I don't know. The body's crazy. You were talking about that earlier, uh-huh. about how, like, uh, bodies know how to, like, just fix themselves. That's crazy. That was crazy. It, like, if you had to, like you were saying, if you had to take every step of how a body fixed itself, like, even no chance. just, just, like, I mean, we know, like, how, a cl- like, a scab closes up or whatever, but, like, really intricate things, that's crazy. And also, if you, like, have you ever thought about, like, if you had to mentally think about all of the things that happen, like, autonomically, so, like, your heart beating, what if you had to think about every time you wanted your heart to beat? Like, you don't ever think about that, but what if you had to think about that? What if you had to think, okay, I need the platelet plugs to come in fill this cut on my hand okay i need this to happen okay i need the scab to form you know what i mean like if you had to think about all those things for it to happen i mean no one would be able to live I, yeah i was gonna say i'd be dead no I'd no dead. you'd be dead for sure but it's crazy the amount of things that just happen without you knowing so much autonomy is going on right now oh, it's at crazy. this exact moment our food like our, our, there's probably food digesting there's yeah. probably water being transported to different cells there's i'm assuming so much i like took phys- physiology last semester and just like the amount of things that happen and like tiny parts like tiny cells tiny parts of your body mm-hmm. it's just insane like the nephron of the kidney is the like functional unit of the kidney uh-huh. i just never knew how much work that thing did it's so small and you just really you just thought your your kidney you're like whatever like pee like uh-huh. you're just like filtering it whatever like whatever but oh my gosh it does so much work and it's so complicated it's just crazy your and we don't consider crazy. that intelligence yeah. Oh, like we consider intelligence like our, our prefrontal cortex yeah. being able to reason, think things through. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Rational thought, creative yeah. thought. Like that's, that's what we consider intelligence, but that is intelligence. Yeah. It's like natural intelligence. Yeah. Oh gosh, the body is insane. That's one of the reasons that I have the major I have is because I just don't think I'll ever stop being amazed by the body. I will never stop. I will never get bored with it. It'll just always continue to amaze me, I think. I feel like if I was going to study the body, it would only give me an explanation that there has to be something greater than what is presented to us. Yeah. Like, just because you would see the the marvelous interaction between nature and man and evolution itself. And that would just make me believe that there has to be something greater. Yeah, I don't know. I don't I really don't know. I I really take anatomy and stuff like that is it's amazing, but I just take it as it is. I don't I don't think any farther and that's really weird, but Interesting. I just I just think I don't know how it got here, but I'm sure happy it did. But I I don't know. I never really thought about that in that Grateful it did. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> grateful it did. Grateful I don't have to tell my heart to beat. Let me tell Ugh. you. It'd be stressful. You won't be able to do anything else. And, like, blinking even. Like, you don't even have to tell yourself to blink. That is a good point. But you can control it. But you too. can control That is what's really weird is, like, I can't make my – I can't, like, sit here and make my heart beat faster. Like, I can uh-huh. go run and make it beat faster. I can – There's a lot of, like, get nervous or 100% whatever. autonomy. Yeah. And then some that are, like, autonomous. But, like, you also have control at the same yeah, time. Yeah, that's really weird. Like, blinking or, like, say – But it feels so different whenever you blink naturally in comparison whenever you force a blink. Like, if you, if you just, like – sit here right now and like just let yourself blink naturally but if you like if you blink intentionally it feels so slow yeah it just feels so it feels so forced and so slow and almost like painful it's like uncomfortable i'm trying to think is there anything else that is like that breathing oh i guess so (laughs) you're right you're right you're right i wonder what that sounded like it's definitely picking up (laughs) do you call us quits on this one yeah Really? Yeah. Do you want to keep going for a little bit longer? Honestly, the only reason I even want to call it quits is I'm thinking about that sandwich. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, how long have we been going? Is that ridiculous? Uh, let me check. One hour. Yeah, we can. We're good. That was good. Yeah. That Didn't was feel good. Like an hour. Didn't feel like an hour at all. That, I, I mean, technically an hour and 45 minutes. Man. We just know how to talk. Let yes. me tell you. That was a good conversation. Both of those. Me Both too. of those. I agree. Wait, let's, uh, you want to name them while we're on air? Should we name them both? Oh, goodness. Goodness gracious. That's it. That's the, that's the name. Goodness one and goodness two. I want to name. All right. One, two, four. All right. One, the first one was 125, and then this one's 126. So 120, 124. Oh, wait. That was, that was my friends. Never mind. Oh. Oh. Goodbye. There we go. Um. What was the first one about? I don't even remember. Isn't I it hard to remember? I have no idea what we talked about. I know we were joking a lot. 
We don't have to name them right now. Okay, I can yeah, I can name like them whenever I'm editing. Wait, can we try this one at least? What are we talking about this one? Everything. We just mostly, mostly, mostly. A lot of religion. A lot of religion. A lot of weird, weird questions like that we just can't even answer. We just kept not even being able to answer them, honestly. Uh. Me asking questions that I don't know the answer to myself, uh, <laughs> and then forgetting what I'm saying. Oh, it's funny. Yeah, I don't. I don't even remember this conversation. Me like, neither. I'm trying. That's really crazy. Talked about Apophis, apocalypse. Where? How do we start? It's so hard to trace back a conversation. That is. That is so like the evolution crazy. of it because it, it it can take quick Especially turns. Especially us because we are both so like everywhere. We are so everywhere. Yeah, we both are very similar in that way. Yeah. Yeah, like I, I don't know something random can pop up and then. And we just have to talk about it. Well, like, it, I mean, the conversation can literally just, like, be reborn. Yeah. It's, like, reincarnated in that moment. Yeah. It's, like, like we're talking about, like, biology, and then I'm, like, you know what? My balls itch right now. And you're, like, you know, that's the funny thing about testicles. <laughs> and then I'm, like, yeah, that Actually, is so fun funny. Fact. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing. I'm producing sperm right now, <laughs> whether I like it or not. Oh, yeah, that is so Autonomy. weird. Autonomy. Autonomy. So weird. Human that is autonomy, crazy. baby. Wow, I can't I can't fully remember that. I'm trying to think of like significant things that we talked about and usually I do name them later on, but it's it's easier if I name them now, so that's why I wanted to. So it was just me being lazy. You know? Okay, well I don't know what to tell you. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> I can I can do it in like a few minutes. Okay, sweet. Cool. Okay. Cool. <laughs> cool. Well 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 Goodbye. I want that sandwich. That's like the hundred okay. percent why I want to end this. I don't Should know where I, you stand okay, on that, but put it in the fridge. I think I did. I brought it in. Well, regardless, it's still good. If it was outside in the rain? No, I know I brought oh. it in. I know I brought it I in. I would still eat it if it was <laughs> in the rain. That's beautiful. It's a soggy sandwich, but still, still. Distracted by the cat. What's the word I'm looking for? Edible. Edible, yeah. Edible. It would still be an edible delight to my taste buds. Great. Fantastic. I would, I would put that on my mouth and put my, my jaw okay. with no level of autonomy very intentionally make it go up and down until the point that it was broken down enough to where I would mm-hmm. deglutition s- what what like swallowing deglutition like de- yeah deglutition deglutition something like that i don't know if i can pronounce it deglish de- 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 i can see your armpits do you ever as a girl do you ever get like self conscious that you have like a little bit of armpit hair i'm, pr- I'm like pretty well shaved no yeah you're pretty i'm not saying you Judging do I, no i'm not saying that i'm not saying that but do you ever? Yeah, like, I do, it, absolutely. Really? I, like, like, is that... I, like, I personally, like... So, I have pretty, like, blonde hair on my legs, so I don't, like, shave super often. But my armpits, I'm, like, day, like every single day, I'm, like, I need to shave. That just makes me feel That's good. how I know a girl is feeling sexy. <laughs> like, whenever she's, like, wearing a sh- sleeveless shirt like you are, and she's, like, like, I don't know, maybe she's at a festival, like, waving her arms up and down. Like, I'm, like, she feels sexy. She's clearly confident enough to know that she doesn't... That she has shaved <laughs> armpits... She feels she has, comfortable she, in her she, femininity. She just has like general hygiene. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sweet. She feels sexy. That's what. That's what my conclusion is on those girls. Good. Okay. So. Okay. Any last words? I enjoyed this. Like I, I really enjoyed this. This was like, like I always say, I always tell people that my favorite ones are the ones where I can be like goofy with people. Yeah. And. I don't always feel that way. I feel like a lot of them, they get really serious. Yeah. Or we just talk about one specific topic. But my favorite ones are the ones where I can just joke around and then also the person's, like, intelligent enough to, like, ponder our existence yeah. and, like, and talk about things like we talked about. Because we had a really good conversation, but it was also, like, really goofy. Yeah. And I'm, I'm telling you, those are, like, to get serious and fun and goofy, like, all of it all mm-hmm. together. And whenever you vibe with the person, like, on, like, a humor point of view. It's my favorite. That's my favorite. That's why I wanted to do a second because I was like, this is awesome. I'm going to get – like, if we continue this conversation, I'm going to have so many good highlights in this one this one um, little little podcast. If I make it two, then I'll have more yeah. highlights because it will be easier for me. And then it's more content too because yeah. it, it sounds a lot cooler to have 126 than it does to 125, at least in my opinion. Yeah. So, yeah, that's about it. That's all I got to say. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I feel sexy. My arms are in the air. My arms are in the air. I'm not wearing any, but I also have armpit hair. So, all right. Deuces. Are you going to say it? Peace.